Who's in the room? Is there somebody else here? This was... In, in general, this is the first time that during a paranormal investigation, um, you know, the previous two had been quite active. I, I myself had been quite energetic. But in this one, as the, as the day progressed, I found myself becoming more lethargic and it was more difficult for me to maintain that kind of enthusiasm. I have no idea why, but I attribute it possibly to the place that we were in. Um, I have a feeling, I kept on getting the feeling that something may have been draining me a little bit because I'd been so enthusiastic. And we had, this was the first time that we used the Kinect, um, and that was very exciting. And we, we actually caught quite an interesting, well, it was the first time that we used it, but also the first time that we caught something using the Kinect. But then Jonathan decided to take a go, and we just pointed it towards him, and all of a sudden, there was just a figure stood right beside him. It was really tall, looked really creepy, and it just kind of lurched over his head and then just completely disappeared. And again, for the first time of using Connect and for the first time of experiencing that, it was it was amazing. Do you want me to right. Brian's gonna hold it? Oh can I do yeah? Sam? Yeah. This time attached to Jonathan, right? Look at the screen. Can you see Jonathan? Raise your hand up, Jonathan. You see? It's mapping them. Okay. And it's kind of a form. And what we're gonna do is put you in front, of it, in front of it, and if anything manifests around you, <laughs> hang on. Yeah, it's the wall. No, but it shouldn't be mapping a human figure, Lee. It's no. the way it works. It shouldn't be mapping. That's a human figure. Or it just kicks ghost. That shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, that's that's it. Even if it's mapping it the wall. It looks like something's crawling over you. Yeah. That was a figure. And I'm not joking. But we were just playing around, and, and this this form climbed over Jonathan's head, and that shocked us all. Um, so this was the first time we'd used the Kinect, but then, again, as the evening went on, we were getting more and more was happening. We, you know, the, the EMF detectors were starting to go crazy. So let us know you're definitely here again. But this room seems heavy. It's got yeah, I feel it the it's, it's, yeah. it's difficult to explain it in using words. That was the wind. This is going to be a little bit loud. It is a spirit box. This is a device that's used for communication with spirits. It just, it's a, just a hacked radio with no aerial, which will just give out a field of white noise by sweeping through radio frequencies. And with any luck, voices will come through answering our questions. So I'm just going to... There's a lot of radio frequencies in there. Is there anybody here except for us three? There's a lot of interference. There's a lot of interference. Too much radio interference. No. Ideally, there would be nothing. But it's impossible. Even with a, even with the area removed from from the radio, it still yeah. picks up on so many radio frequencies. We just we can't use it. Uh, well, the jib telecom. Yeah. Ah, well that explains it. Jib, the jib telecom well, massive the aerial is just out there. So. Out to, we have we to use now, the problem with that is um, parabolia, which is um, really so you will hear something even though nothing's actually there. Mm. So there might just be a jarble of, of voices and you'll think you'll hear your name or, your, or whatever it is, but it's, it's not actually happening. So because there's so many radio frequencies, I don't, and, and my ears particularly aren't quite so attuned to it, I wouldn't really want to use a spirit box no, because we'll it wouldn't really be authentic. And in itself, that part of the investigation was probably the, one of the best ones we've had because the activity was just only constant but consistent as well as where they, they were just repeatedly, all, you know, in more than one. It's been a presence of living here. I just got a bit of a shiver. Yeah, like yeah. a really, really cold feeling. Yeah. Don't this program. Jonathan, the I've never, ever, ever, very, very intelligent. I don't want to get drawn in to thinking that something is um, a paranormal activity when perhaps it isn't. I, it was the first location where I actually felt something. I felt 
a cold crawling up my spine. There was a lot of spirit that had been there for hundreds and hundreds of years. And particularly as I approached with Brian and Lee, was that we were being affected. Machines were being affected. Very tall, dominant man, uh, from what I recall, channeling, drew us to an area which was near stairs. The usual tingling, you know, and the hair rising up and everything else. And impressive. atmosphere there. We even tried, because of the object, which is the first time we've done that, uh, anything on, on the trigger object itself. Just a certain set of stairs that Sam picked up on, and she said there was a certain energy, there was a certain entity there, and he was a negative entity, and he was wanting to push people down the stairs. So that's where we concentrated our efforts. Bottom of the stairs, Lee had made his way about halfway up with Sam, and Sam started channeling. We've got now the names, and, and, and yeah, um, maybe we can. Um, I now know they were quite tall. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I've been getting names out of the echo box that mm, corresponded. Yeah, definitely. Right, so it was uh, Sir James Somerville, Admiral of the Fleet. Yeah, see what we do. I'm going to head up upstairs. Yeah, there's something about the stairs that's attached to. Yeah. My first. Uh, yeah. Just starting to get a spike now. Yeah. Just down. Yeah. We're doing this again on the stairs. Yep, yeah. spiking. It's going off the scale again. It's hurting my hand to, to even interpret his energy. Oh, through a message or not? These days. You don't know what recordings are. Uh, it's very, very small. I've not felt that on, on uh, this much remorse from, from any spirit I've channeled mm. ever. Ever. Even with suicide um, uh, channelings when I've channeled uh, suicide. The amount of remorse this man has got is, 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 is huge. Huge. Has increased and increased and increased, and I think it just took a toll. Would you like to have more? Energy of control. Yes, she would, wouldn't you? Fuck. Do you want us to call you Sir James? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Sir James, is that your title? Ah. Uh, yes. So James, yeah. is this something you want to say to us? No. 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 Do you want us to leave this place, Sir James? <laughs> can, can you please repeat that, Sir James? Can you say my name? What's my name? Leave. Just leave. You want to throw me over the stairs, aren't you? Um, Sam was just again, she was picking up on this entity, it was a negative entity, and we were just asking basic questions, and then all of a sudden, there was just a female voice that came from nowhere. And it was none of the crew, the only, only female member of the crew that was there was Sam herself, and it was just what it said. It was a voice in it, it just seemed so surprised in what we were doing and it was just again I have never heard an EVP like that before. Are there more than a hundred here with you? Don't leave her. 
me. What? And do you want Samantha to, to get out? Do you want Samantha to leave? This... I'm not sure if it was bewilderment that she was ex experiencing at what was going on or, or if there was intent that we couldn't perceive because it was caught on a, on a digital recorder. But she said, fuck me. And again, we're not sure what she meant when she said that, but it was clear as day. And it's possibly, as I said, you know, one of the most profane things I've ever heard coming through these, these devices. Can you show us that you're here? Can you make these lights go out again? Could you make them shine up again? Thank you. Thank you very much. If you want us to leave, you're going to have to do better than just speaking into that device. Make a noise, tap on something, close this door in front of me. If you can close this door, we'll leave. Is it women that you don't like? Is that why you were trying to hurt Samantha? The hairs on my arms are starting to stand up. I'm feeling charged. You can use our energy. Oh, you can use our oh my god. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I don't know if, I don't know if you can see this. Oh. Who's in this room with us now? Give us your name. Can you say one of our names, please? What about Brian? Can you say the name Brian? There's a lot of people that don't think you exist. If you can make that device say the name Brian, you'll be proving them wrong. second wind towards the end of it but it was the first time I'd felt physically attacked I think you know and, and drained which was definitely strange <laughs> probably walked past or driven past Flat Bassin magazine hundreds of thousands of times in your life without even knowing it exists. Next week on the Ghost Trail, we're going to find out what happens inside this building when the lights go out. <laughs>